I posted two videos every single day for a month and this is what happened. So the rules were simple. Number one, I had to use AI to do the work for me, which included using Grammarly, Pictory, Quillbot, and vidIQ. Number two, I had to choose a new niche. Number three, I had to post two videos every single day for 30 days, which includes one long form video and one short. Spoiler alert. I broke rule number three. So off I was wondering what my new niche should be and then it hit me. I'm introverted, so my channel should be about introverts. So I created my logo on Canva which didn't take too long and then I created my channel name Introvertzilla. For the record, it sounded cool at the time. As far as topics go, I just searched introvert in YouTube and then found a bunch of content related to introverts. So I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll model that. I will mention the one thing I didn't find was one channel dedicated to talking about introverts. So I thought I hit the jackpot with this idea. And as you see, I even created a spreadsheet with all the data of videos I should make. I know it only goes up to 23, but that's because I got lazy and stopped writing in there. So I separated the video into three stages. Stage one, videos one through 10. Stage two, videos 11 through 20 stage 3 videos 21 through 30 sort of remember that and with each stage I made different changes stage 1 I'm not the proudest about this but for the first 10 or so videos I did everything the lazy way I relied solely on Quillbot to go ahead and paraphrase my scripts and just use that I barely changed anything which is why when I paraphrased it even though the scripts were a thousand words, they ended up being paraphrased to like 500. And because of that, I didn't see much traction. The only thing I did add was a custom outro. And for thumbnails, I try to keep everything simple. And I had three rules. Number one, always include a person. Number two, include three to four bright words. Number three, always include a dark background. I thought they looked pretty decent, but my views say otherwise. And the most views I got during stage one was four views. So with each long form video I've made, I also made one short form video and after i posted my second short it got me the most views on that channel which is 454 which is a lot more than my previous record of four stage two this is where i switched gears and i realized that copying and pasting scripts even though i was using quillbot to paraphrase wasn't the best idea for growth so instead of pasting the youtube script straight to quillbot i did some edits i went ahead and added some punctuation i changed some words and i mixed things up a bit and then I went ahead and put it on Quillbot. And as far as thumbnails go, I changed that too. Before I had a theme, but then I just changed it to kind of random. I mean, you could see this bushy haired guy with the word dot and a random introverted elephant. I didn't know what I was thinking. But by the end of it, I did stumble upon a design that I wanted to continue, and that was including celebrities. And as far as results go, they were disappointing yet again. Although this time, I did manage to get 1800 views on one short. So, progress. And that also means don't sleep on shorts. Stage 3. At this point, I was pretty much done with the content. Not because I didn't see results, but because I didn't really like talking about it. But I still managed to change things up a bit and also do things better. So instead of using YouTube videos to go ahead and get the scripts, I actually looked at articles. And I thought it was much easier to go ahead and do that just because I can sift through different articles, pick and choose different things, and then go ahead and use Coolbot to help me paraphrase. And of course in between I did do minor edits to go ahead and make it as unique as possible. As far as thumbnails goes, I went full force with the celebrity approach. I thought it looked kind of cool and if somebody's known in a thumbnail I thought it'd be easier to click on it. But then I shortly realized these kind of look clickbaity because I'm not even talking about the celebrity. So then towards the end of stage 3 I switched to gears yet again. I'll talk about that later. As far as my thumbnail designs, I thought they were pretty good. And then my last two thumbnails, I thought that was going to be perfect for later on. And something else I changed at this point was to take out outros completely. And the reason being is uh, I just wanted to test it out. And as far as results go, as you can see, not a lot. I mean, the most views I got during this time was 202 views, which was on one of my Elon Musk shorts. But the big thing is... Overall, what did I learn? The first thing is to make sure I like the niche, cause just because I'm an introvert doesn't mean I like talking and writing about it. And because of that, my production value wasn't the best and I know I could have done much better. Second thing I learned is that things don't have to be perfect. You don't have to perfect things, at least not in the beginning. And the reason I say this is because analysis by paralysis is real and it stopped me from doing so many things in the past. And if you truly wanna start something, if you truly wanna start a faceless YouTube automation channel, then don't let trying to make your first video perfect be the reason that you don't start and mistakes are going to happen and the first video is probably going to suck but as long as you learn from those mistakes and focus on improving 
then that's all that really matters. For example, I knew starting Introvert Zillow wouldn't be perfect. I knew it wouldn't be the best production value. And even so, I still managed to get some results. So what would I do differently? For starters, I would choose a different niche and I would go ahead and make sure to do better research. At first, I thought because I didn't see channels talking about this specifically, I thought it might be an untapped niche. But I shortly realized that maybe it wasn't such a good idea. I know I saw some videos that did traction on about the introvert topic, but it was never a niche channel. I'd also do my own voiceovers, and I understand Pictory offers the AI voiceover, which isn't bad, but the thing is, I think there's a much more human connection when you hear somebody's voice in a video versus just hearing a robot, especially when you're talking about something like introversion and personality, because I was thinking, you know, if I want to hear something like about that, I'd want to hear somebody on the other end rather than just a random AI generated voice. And I'd also put more work into Pictory. At first, the goal was to go ahead and use AI as much as possible, which meant not switching up things too much and having it do all the work. But if I wanted to do a much better job, then I would have actually sifted through each individual scene like I did in one of my other videos I posted and actually make sure it aligns. Like if the voiceover was talking about somebody happy and it shows a random picture of like an umbrella, that just doesn't align. So I would have went ahead and actually changed them or even download additional images. Now I did do that with some of the shorts, like if I was talking about Elon Musk or Marilyn Monroe, but the thing is, I didn't do that with all the videos. Questions. So you might be wondering, how long did it actually take me to make these videos? So for the first stage, it took me roughly five hours, and that includes finding the videos, doing the scripts, and then actually using Pictory and rendering the videos. And then after that, I stopped keeping track. So how much did it actually cost? As far as software goes, I already had the majority of it. The only new software I had to get was Grammarly. And it wasn't for this challenge, but it was more so because I wanted to go ahead and have my scriptwriter on my actual faceless channels use it. And so in total, $75 a month, which includes $13 on Canva, $10 on Quillbot, $12 on Grammarly, and $40 on Pictory. Can you do this for free? Yeah. You don't have to get any of the software I'm using or pay for anything really. The only reason I have those is because it just makes things a little bit easier and a little bit quicker. If you want to make thumbnails, there's a free version of Canva. If you need help paraphrasing things, there's a free version of Quillbot. But if you do have some money to spend, I would recommend at least getting some sort of video editing software that helps compile all the stock footage. And the reason I'm saying this is not so you can go ahead and get Pictory, but it's because it actually makes editing so much easier. All I had to do was go ahead and put in a script, just give it a few seconds to a few minutes, and then it'll generate all the scenes for you. And instead of you having to go ahead, download all the scenes, and then go ahead and put it in your own video editor, Pick 3 does it for you. And so the real work that you'd have to do would be actually change the scenes up, make sure they line up. And then I'd also recommend doing your own voiceover, just because having a human touch just feels so much more natural and nicer quality better content rather than a robot voice. So yeah, that's about it. And hopefully you guys found some value out of this and hopefully it shed some light on the ins and outs of it. I do want to mention you guys can definitely do a much better job than I did on this 30 day challenge here. I didn't put my full effort or full work into it and I still got some results. But yeah, anyway, if you guys want to check out my other videos, I also do have 90 days of YouTube automation over here. And then shortly, I'm also going to have my 30 days short challenge where I only post shorts for a month and be on the lookout for that. And yeah, until next time, bye. By the way, I have a clicker, so I'm going to shut off the video.